What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and Happy New Year! It is 2023. Oh my goodness, how time flies. I feel like I just celebrated the new year for 2020, and now I'm three years older. I'm gonna start with talking about last year, though, because it was absolutely insane. Let's start at the beginning. You might remember the video where I said I'm moving! I'm in a whole new city. So, well, I've been here for about a year now. And I live out here in Portland, worked at an amazing tech company, no longer work at an amazing tech company, but now I've got an opportunity with an even better one. So I'm pretty hyped for that. Everything's been pretty chaotic for, for the end of 22. And in the middle, I had a few issues. And that's kind of what shook up my life in a way that I really wish it didn't. But you have to learn from your mistakes. You have to grow. And if you don't make mistakes, well, you're probably pretty boring, honestly. And as a coyote, you know, I do crazy stuff. I do the, the, the stuff that no one else thinks to do. And you know what? That leads to a pretty exciting life. And if I do the positive things, it's pretty cool. Um, I almost started a revolution at my last company. Uh, the boss didn't like that, so I don't work there anymore. And neither does anybody else because the company imploded. All because of me. It's been a crazy year. So I didn't vlog enough. Um, I didn't vlog as much because vlogging is difficult, but I went to so many music festivals, so many music events. It was an absolute blast every time. When I dress like this and I go to a rave, people have their freaking minds blown. And over the course of the year, I even got the name The Gorge Furry because I was just present. Anyone who walks up to me at like, you know, Moonlight Masquerade, which just happened at, on the new year, people kept coming up to me and it's like, dude, I see you everywhere. How are you doing that? Here's my little secret. I have no clue. I went to MFF and I haven't even gotten to talk about that yet. MFF was one of the craziest experiences of my life. Um, I didn't feel great for most of it. I was pretty hungover, so like most of my time was spent sleeping or wandering around and experiencing the nightlife. But one of the craziest things, one of the absolutely insane things, talking to this camera, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much alone in this room. You know, I'm just talking to myself, but I'm not. There are thousands of you that could possibly be seeing this. TikTok even more, Twitter, all of it. So many people can see this. And you know, some of you, I can remember your name because you know, y'all reply to my tweets or comment regularly or stuff like that. But the people who, who, who just watch my content would run up to me being like, Kezzy, Kezzy, and I'm gonna be like, how do you know who I am? Like, I'm just a dog. I just bark on a camera. How do you, how do you recognize me? And in that moment, I realized that I'm in a magical place right now where you know, and, and, and this is true for any content creator. You know, you might be sitting drawn alone in your bedroom, but the amount of impact you have on other people, just because you're alone making it, once you put it out there, that changes people. That makes people smile. It makes them sad. It brings them emotion, depending on what you're putting out. And the fact that I have that impact on people blew my mind. I, the fact that people knew who I was, because I, I already know I'm kind of well known in the rave scene because I've interacted with those people. They've seen me in, in, in fursuit. So thank you to everyone who reached out to me and, and made me feel like, like I have an impact, like I have, worth here and to anyone who's struggling with that kind of like self-doubt don't forget 
There's a lot of people on the internet. You don't know who's going to see what you make. You never do. But while we're on the topic of MFF, I learned a huge lesson. I met someone amazing at MFF. We've been talking for a little while over text. Um, they're very, very pop, like, like they, they're, they're very, they're very talkative on, on Twitter. And everything that they say hits me right in the heart. Because they, they know so much. And I would go up to them and ask them, hey, you know, this is my first Ferdy Con. And I asked them, what's a con mean to you? What do you do at a furry con to make it worth going? To go all the way out to Chicago, to go all the way to California, to Pennsylvania, all these places, what makes a furry con worth it to you? Because I'm used to festivals. I went to music festival after music festival. It was just, that's a different vibe because you're there for the music. You're there every day to listen to loud music on incredible visuals. A furry con has a little bit less than that. Sure, there's the nightly rave, but spending all day just waiting for the rave makes you realize that you're missing so much of the con because the con is about the people, is about the furries that you meet while you're there. You know, you, you meet up with friends from long distances. You make new friends. You talk to people that you've never met in real life. You see people that you've never seen out of their fursuit and you get to talk to their whole real self. And you get to make these deeper connections than just looking at someone on a camera. And that's what furry cons are about, is making these connections, experiencing the community. One of my favorite things, and I might have a video to show it, was a drum circle. They had a whole Band. None of these people knew each other. They just congregated in some corner and just had fun. They joined together and they made music, beautiful music. And that's something that just you don't see. And MFF was one of the coolest things. One of the biggest things I learned from MFF, though, I brought some alcohol. I had a little bit of weed. You know, I had some stuff to get me. You know, you know, in that in that in that effed up headspace, and I I made the mistake of doing it all in one day. Um, I had a few people in my room, so we were sharing, and it just take a forty to the head. But I ran out basically day one. And I was like, man, I'm so sad. I have nothing to, you know, uh, scramble my brain with and blah, blah, blah. You know, I had this feeling like I always need to be, you know, messed up in the head on something to enjoy myself. And yet, you know, day zero, I run out, I'm dry. I'm doing nothing, no smoking, no drinking, none of it. And yet, I had a better time than I would have if I was drinking. I had the best time I possibly could have had because I wasn't intoxicated. And so anyone who, you know, parties a lot, like, you know, all y'all party animals, me especially, you don't need to get fucked up to have fun. It doesn't need to happen. Because fun happens whether or not you're on something or not, you know? And I think that that's what made MFF even more special, was I didn't feel this need, this urge to get, to get blasted every day and go to the rave and just be like, oh, I'm a raver, you know? I, I didn't need any of that. And if you're struggling with that, I 
implore you, try doing something that you'd normally get effed up on and try to do it sober. Because it makes you present. It makes you feel like you are there. And being at the event that you're physically at, that's a good feeling. And you remember it a lot better. So that's how 2022 went. It was a pretty wild time. Ups that I could only dream of and downs I've always feared. And it makes me happy to know that every once in a while, I can make a difference. And for anyone who feels like they can't, remember, you always are. So that's about it. I've got nothing else to say. Uh, be careful, think wisely, and until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.